Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the science fiction, thriller, and action movie titled, Selfless. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the first scene, we see a man called Damien, a businessman and billionaire, who is standing at the window in his New York City skyscraper apartment. Right now, his nurse is gathering her tools, ready to leave. Damien has terminal cancer and has been told he has maybe six months left to live. A while later, Damien meets his best friend Martin on lunch, discussing his condition and that he hasn't told his daughter Claire about it yet. Apparently, Damien has a bad relationship with Claire due to having been a workaholic and didn't spend much time with her when she was young. Martin believes however that Claire will forgive him and that their relationship will be rectified if he tells her. As they are about to leave, Damien asks Martin if he has heard of shedding before, and Martin replies that he hasn't. Once in his limousine, Damien attempts calling Claire, but he gets no answer. He then picks up a business card from Phoenix Biogenetics, remembering a conversation he had with the company owner called Dr. Albright. Albright's main goal in life is to provide humanity with the gift of extending one's lifetime beyond what is naturally possible. He has managed to build a machine that can transfer the consciousness of one body to another, a procedure he calls shedding. If someone is willing to pay a fortune, the company offers genetically engineered new bodies that they transfer one's consciousness into. Damien also recollects asking why Dr. Albright's service is still illegal, to which Albright responded that he was asking the wrong question. The doctor said he should have asked himself if he feels immortal. While pondering over if he should accept Dr. Albright's offer, he goes to see Claire. His daughter is running a non-profit organization, and to try to amend things, Damien donates money to her cause, but doesn't reveal anything about his cancer. However, Claire refuses his donation, telling him she doesn't want his money, thinking he is trying to manipulate her. At his office later, Damien continues researching Phoenix Biogenics, all while being disheartened from the failure to connect with Claire. He finds out that a Dr. Jensen was the first to invent the device, and Damien watches a video of him explaining the ideas behind it. As Dr. Jensen mentions that his aim was to free the mind from the body to let people live beyond the body's limitations, Damien suddenly coughs up blood and collapses. He later wakes up with medical attention around him and determines to contact Dr. Albright to do the procedure. Albright tells Damien that he cannot make contact with anybody from his old life, and that he must start over somewhere else once the operation has been performed. Also, he has to go to New Orleans and fake the cause of his death publicly. The following day, Damien calls Martin while flying on his plane to ask him to meet for lunch in New Orleans. Before the meeting, Damien goes to hide a box with unknown content by burying it at the New Orleans cemetery. After meeting Martin, Damien suddenly fakes a seizure and collapses. They call 911, but as the ambulance has picked him up, it heads for Phoenix Biogenics instead of to the hospital. They immediately start the procedure and inject him with something while putting him in the machine. As the device starts making loud noises and emits powerful lights, Damien gets worried. However, before he knows it, his mind has been transferred to the new and healthy body. As he looks to his left, he sees his old body beside him, lifeless. Afterwards, as Dr. Albright explains that it takes some time before he is fully adapted to the body, Damien starts hallucinating about a horse on a field. Albright then sarcastically says that death has side effects. To grow accustomed to his new body, Damien has to undergo therapy and exercising. Simultaneously, Damien is practicing a new fake bio and life story, since he must completely leave his old life behind. His new name will be Edward Kidner. After some time, Damien begins liking his new persona and attractive figure. His headaches and hallucinations haven't stopped yet however, but Dr. Albright tells him that he is still adapting to the new neural structure, and gives him pills that will help him. Albright warns him that he can suffer severe migraines or even die if he stops taking the pills, and that he will have to stay in New Orleans to meet with him regularly and receive his supply of them. As his training is complete, Damien is shown to his new home, which is a huge magnificent mansion. Damien is becoming more comfortable with his avatar Edward, beginning to play basketball and learning to know a neighbor called Anton. Anton asks him to join him at a club later, and Damien reluctantly agrees. As he arrives at the club that evening, a woman gets interested in him. Because he is not comfortable answering questions about his life just yet, people find him a bit weird, but the woman follows him home, and they end up sleeping together. It doesn't take long before he gets used to his new routines, playing basketball with friends, going out on clubs, sleeping with beautiful women, enjoying life, and of course taking his pills. But over time, he seems to get bored and is not satisfied with his new life. He longs after his daughter, and as he is feeling deep sorrow one day, he forgets to take his pills and starts hallucinating. He sees a glimpse of some military operation, 
then some water tower painted as a pumpkin, and then he sees a woman and her sick daughter on some ranch. As he later explains to Dr. Albright that these hallucinations feel more like memories, Albright asserts that he only confuses old memories and current emotions into imaginary stories in his head. To make him relax and think of something else for a while, Albright hands him a ticket to Hawaii, and also doubles Damien's dose to prevent more hallucinations. But Damien insists he saw a sick girl with her mother, to which Albright just responds that the little girl must be reflections of his feelings for Claire, and that the Latina woman he sees must be some one-night stand from when he was young. Damien however, never told Albright the woman was Latina, and so he becomes suspicious of him, starting to research if there is a tower with a painted pumpkin on it. After searching, he finds it, and it is located in a town in St. Louis. To investigate, he deceives Albright into thinking he's going to Hawaii, when he in fact will go to St. Louis. Before departing, he goes to retrieve some documents and cash in the box he buried before. He goes to the airport where one of Albright's men watches him intently. He takes a flight to St. Louis, and as he eventually arrives at the pumpkin-like water tower, he gets out and walks up to the house on the property. Damien then knocks on the door, but there is nobody home. He decides to enter, and quickly notices an image of the Latina woman, and then medical bills addressed to the woman, whose name is Madeline. He walks into the little girl's room, and sees medical equipment for breathing assistance. Suddenly, he discovers an image with not only the woman and the girl on it, but himself too. Apparently, the body he is in, was another man's body before and is not genetically engineered. While pondering over the unpleasant truth, Madeline appears with a gun behind him, thinking it as a burglar. As he slowly turns around and tells her to remove her finger from the trigger, Madeline drops to the floor in total emotional devastation since she thought her husband was dead. Just as he begins explaining, men from Phoenix Biogenics force their way into the house, knocking Madeline unconscious and puts her on her bed. Suddenly, Anton appears from nowhere, having worked for Albright the whole time, and explains to him that Mark, the man's body he is in, agreed to exchange his body for treatment money for his daughter's illness. Damien is upset, telling him that Albright is a murderer. But Anton heartlessly says that it's just like buying a new car and finding out it had a few miles on it, and that it's normal to feel disappointed. He asks what will happen to the woman, and they tell him they will make it appear like an accident and burn the house with her in it. As it so happens, Damien seems to have a sense of compassion and responsibility, and decides to save the woman. He says he needs to go to the bathroom to take his pills, but once there he attacks one of the men. Turns out, he is Mark's fighting instinct from the military, and so he fights them off, but drops his pills while fighting Anton. He then heads for Madeline and wakes her up, after which they crawl down under the house where Damien can shoot all the men outside trying to burn down the building. The two then immediately go to get Anna, the little girl, out of school. Once there, Anna thinks Damien is her father and runs to hug him, telling him her mother had cried night after night, but that she herself knew he wasn't dead. Later, they make a stop to sleep at a motel, where Damien picks up his laptop and searches for ways to get a hold of more pills. He finds out that Jensen has used his apprentice Albright's body to extend his life. He also comes across an address to Jensen's wife named Phyllis. Since haven't taken any pills for a while, he starts hallucinating, and this time sees one of Phoenix Biogenics labs. Madeline sees he has collapsed and gets worried, but Damien knows what to do next. The following day, they head to meet Phyllis, who is living in a nursing home. He pretends to be one of Jensen's old students, and Phyllis, who is Alzheimer's, begins telling him all kinds of stuff. He finds out that Jensen is visiting her every week, and so Damien asks her to call him and invite him in. Albright falls for the trick and arrives, and meets Damien holding a gun in Phyllis's room. Damien demands more pills, and Albright begins explaining that the pills are forcing Mark's consciousness out so that he himself can take over the brain. In practice, he is killing Mark by taking the pills. Eventually, there will be nothing left of Mark, no military instincts or whatever, at which point Damien will own the body. If he stops taking the pills, Mark will come back, but Damien's consciousness will die. Yet, Damien leads Albright out at gunpoint and demands to be taken to his lab. In the hallway however, one of Albright's men disarms him, and Damien is led down to their car. Once there, Madeline appears and distracts the men, allowing Damien to attack them. After having fended off a couple of them, he finds out that the last man is in fact Anton in a new body. Anton says that he has been shedding before, and that he has learnt to adapt quicker to new bodies. Before Damien knocks him unconscious, Anton manages to tell Madeline that her husband is not who he seems to be and tells she should ask him when Anna's birthday is. Back in the car, and as soon as they are out of danger, Madeline angrily insists that he pulls over. They get out of the car, and she asks him when Anna's birthday is, as well as other personal details, 
but he can't answer them, and so Damien begins explaining the truth. Madeline is extremely upset that Damien has manipulated her and Anna, to which Damien replies that he hears that often. She asks how she could ever tell her daughter that the man who looks like her father in reality is a stranger. But since Albright's men are after her and Anna to kill them, she agrees on working with Damien even though she is reluctant to do it. Damien has a plan, which is to get help from his friend Martin, who will fly her and Anna using his plane to a safe location, after which he will disappear and they will never hear from him again. They arrive at Martin's mansion, and Damien explains everything, managing to convince Martin that he in fact is Damien, explaining stories only he and Damien would know. Martin promises to help them, but that fueling the plane will take some time. Damien later tries to tell Anna how she will soon never see her father again, but as they are talking, the two begin bonding, and they end up having a real father-daughter moment. He teaches her how to swim and they have a fun time together. Madeline sees them from a window and seems happy. A while later, Madeline enters a room where Damien is, and since she's still attracted to her husband, she asks if she can listen to his heart and hugs him. Moments later, she begins kissing him. She asks about his life, and he mentions that he has a daughter on his own called Claire, who they start talking about. Damien sees that mirrors in the bathroom are covered with blankets and suspects something is wrong. The two start searching for Anna and find her playing in a room with a boy called Tony. Damien knows that Martin's son Tony died two years ago, and so Martin must have got help from Phoenix Biogenics. When he confronts Martin about it, Martin apparently doesn't know that Tony's new body wasn't genetically engineered, but another family's child. Martin is shocked and gets devastated for taking someone else's life, and admits to them he never began fueling his plane, but instead called Albright who has sent men to kill them. Right now, they should be right outside the property, waiting for them. He offers his help, this time for real, and leads Madeline and Anna through the forest to a diner, all while Damien uses a car to lure the mercenaries away. A car chase ensues, and Damien is shot at. After a lot of shooting and crashing into each other, a frontal crash causes all the cars to either flip over or crash into trees. Damien made it, and steps out to ensure that Albright's men are all dead. He then heads for the diner where they all would meet up again, but after a while only Martin enters, seemingly being desperate, telling Damien he fell behind and saw Madeline and Anna from afar being taken by some men in a car. Moments later, Martin reveals that he was the one who gave Damien the Phoenix Biogenics card in the first place, hoping he could repay Damien for the life he gave him. Martin picks up a container with pills, as well as a note with ingredients on, telling Damien that he didn't want to be dependent on Albright when Tony got his new body, so he had the pills reverse engineered. Martin tells him Madeline and Anna are gone, since they have probably been taken to Albright's lab, which no one knows where it is. But Damien says he won't stand seeing the girl lose her father, like Claire lost him once. So, Damien and Martin go to a motel, where Damien doesn't take pills for a whole day just to intentionally hallucinate to see Mark's memories and get clues about the lab's location. As Damien wakes up, he tells Martin he saw the lab at an abandoned facility with Mardi Gras floats, knowing exactly where it is, and asks Martin if he still has his old boat. Next, Damien arrives at the facility, and knocks out the guard at the entrance. He enters and sees big translucent tents inside. He knocks another guard unconscious and walks into the tent structure. In one of the rooms, he finds Anton's body lying, injured from the car crash earlier. Suddenly he hears Allwright's voice, and sees a one-way mirror. Allwright turns the lights on in his room so that Damien can see him, and then explains they will use Madeline's body for a client, and sell the little girl's organs. Damien lifts his gun and tries to shoot him, but the glass is bulletproof, and so the bullets just bounce. Men with guns pointed at Damien enter, and Albright tells him they were going to transfer Anton's mind into an accountant's body, but since Mark's military instincts are attractive, they will use his body instead. As the guards jump on Damien, he picks up a bullet from the floor and puts it in his mouth. They put him in the machine, and afterwards Albright walks up to him asking his name and how many children he has. Mark answers his name is Anton and that he has no children, and Albright tells his men to get rid of Anton's previous body. Later, Anton demands some guards to see Madeline and Anna, who lead him to them. Once in the room where they are held, Anton shoots the guards. Apparently, Damien is still in Mark's body. The bullet he put in his mouth disabled the machine, and so Anton is dead. Damien and Madeline run out and shoot their way to the bulletproof room. Albright is standing on the other side of the glass and they begin talking. As Albright tells Damien he will fade away if he doesn't get the pills and thus won't kill him, Damien finds a flamethrower in the room. Albright suddenly sees the one-way mirror start to wave, and he thinks he is starting to hallucinate taking a pill to alleviate it. At the same time, he hears Damien list the ingredients in the pills, 
and suddenly a hole in the glass appears, and Albright is burnt to death. Soon after, firemen appear and the three escape. While walking, Damien tells them that Martin has a boat further down that will take them away. A while later, Damien enters Claire's non-profit organization and introduces himself as Edward Kidner, a close friend to her father Damien. He tells her Damien always spoke about how proud he was of her, but that he never managed to find the words to tell her. He hands her a letter in which Damien wrote about how he felt. He leaves, seeing her from the street, reading the letter and getting emotional. A time after that, he is seen waking up from bed and seems confused and pondering. He sees a computer and a video on it, and hits play. In it, Damien is seen expressing his gratitude to Mark for borrowing his body for a couple of months and wishes him the best of luck with taking care of Madeline and Anna. Apparently, Damien has unselfishly sacrificed his life so that Mark could come back. In the final scene, Mark is seen reuniting with his family, Madeline and Anna, who are now living on a Caribbean island in a big house, just like the three always had dreamed of living. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.